Good morning. The Bible tells us in Mark 12, verses 41 through 44, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw the people put the money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, and which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all gave out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Now, I like history. And I was just reading the other day about Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie was one of the richest men that have ever been in the United States. The railroad, all the railroad companies and all those things that he owned. But yet, even an unbeliever, you know what he said? He said, the love of money is the worst idolatry that ever existed. If you have something of worth, then it's your obligation to benefit mankind and to give it away. And when he died, he almost had nothing. And yet during his life, he gave away Carnegie Hall, all the money that he gave away. I started thinking about that of the people that I've known in life. A lady, it was so precious. Her name was Suttles, Mrs. Suttles. She was a school teacher. And she taught at a very poor school. And those little kids would come in there and she would see them in their situation. And be, I remember her telling me, she said, those little girls, they were so poor, they didn't even have panties. That's what she called. And she said, I would buy them panties. And she would do things for them. Well, she did that for 40 years. I was at her funeral. The place was packed with those little girls that still remembered what that lady did. A lady in our church years and years ago didn't have much money. She took care of a family next to her and they were very impoverished. But they came to her as a mama and she made cakes for people. She did what she could. Her funeral also was packed. I can't tell you how many funerals I've done in which people live selfish lives and there was almost no one there. You know, the other day, I was in a, a little restaurant. It was called Jack's and you know the little uh, hamburger places. And I was in a small city and I was sitting there eating my breakfast. I had a pretty good breakfast. And a guy walked over, and for some reason, I just felt led. He seemed lonely, older man. And I said, sir, would you like to sit with me? And he says, uh, right here. I said, yeah, there's nobody here. He said, okay. So he sat down with me, and he started telling me a story. I said, well, um, you live around here, and you got a family and this kind of thing? He said, well, I used to. He said, uh, I'm sorry. Explain if you don't mind. He said, my wife just died two years ago. I said, I'm so sorry. He said, yeah, we're married 62 years. And he said, I said, what about children? He said, well, no, I don't have any more. I had two boys. He said, one was killed in the service. I said, I'm so sorry. He said, the other was killed in a gas explosion four years ago. And the guys started tearing up. And for just a moment, I could feel the presence of God there in such a powerful way that it was unbelievable. As if God had orchestrated that whole thing to minister to this old man who needed somebody to share his pain for that moment. Now, how much did that cost me to do that? I gave what I had at that particular minute, time, to somebody else. Now, you've got something to give far beyond what you think. You think, well, I don't have a lot of money, and I don't have a lot of this, and I don't have a lot of that. No, you've got something to give. You think about all those opportunities, and the next time you're in a situation, ask God how you can give to the person 
in front of you. That's what the Good Samaritan did. And God will bless you in a way that you cannot believe. God bless you for being here.